Hello Sector Watchers, this is the 40th episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday the 21st of July and recorded on the 20th. For those of you who don't know me, welcome to the show. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm your host today. And for our regulars, welcome back. I'm glad you're joining me again. I love to hear from you, so if you watch the show on YouTube, please don't forget to like the video or even better, share your thoughts, ideas, suggestions, etc. in the comment section below. I do read them and I will respond to legitimate comments or questions. Of course, you can always send an email or use any of the social media handles to stay in touch. Today, I'll be doing a quick overview of what happened across asset classes and sectors last week. And following that quick scan, I'll be working my way down the investment pyramid using a longer term perspective on the outlook for the various asset classes and individual sectors. In the second half of the show, I'll be taking a thorough look at the long short baskets that we've been maintaining here in Sector Spotlight over the last few months. We'll have a look at how the picks are doing and make some changes as we go along. So let's not waste more time and get down to business right away. On the screen we have two RRGs over the last five days to give us an idea what happened in asset classes and sectors. On the left hand side the RRG for asset classes um, ending last Friday and as you can see it was a it was a quiet week for asset classes. Our benchmark the Vanguard Balanced Index Fund gained 0.9 percent. Uh, it was led by US stocks 1.4 percent followed by high yield corporate bonds, uh, HYG, corporate bonds uh, and then underneath were the underperformers most notably the US dollar uh, and you know as I said not a lot going on. I quickly want to move on to the sectors because I want to spend some more time uh, for both these RRGs, putting it in a, a little bit longer term perspective and, um, and, and paint our investment pyramid again where we go from asset classes through um, regions and sectors etc. So for the sector universes, um, again 1.3% not spectacular. Uh, some good sectors, uh, industrials, materials, healthcare doing very good, utilities surprisingly good for energy while well, you know it's still on the far left but you know it had a good week uh, and then we we saw some weakness in technology um finally i was almost inclined to say uh, and also communication services um didn't do too well let's quickly move to uh, a little bit longer term perspective and i want to bring in the investment pyramid for asset classes and sectors and this is the one that you've seen before. Let me quickly bring back that asset allocation RRG on a weekly scale and talk you through it. Um, we've got real estate which is V&Q still as an underperformer in the pyramid uh, and, and that's going to stay like that because you see that the tail is already rolling over, it's already um, uh, having trouble. I'm going, to, I'm going to skip bonds for now. High yield is inside lagging, picking up as, as we saw it had a good week last week but in the bigger scheme of things it's still a very weak asset class. Uh, stocks I'm also going to skip, going to come back to that later. The US dollar uh, now firmly inside the lagging quadrant and if we look at the chart I think we've got to admit that it is now rolling over out of that uh, rising trend and it's challenging its lows in relative strength versus VBI and X. So I'm going to move that to an underperform position in, uh, in the asset class scheme. Then we have commodities um, way up there inside improving. I actually have to add dollar GNX. That's the new one that I'm tracking. That's the GSCI um, commodity index. Uh, similar picture, wider rotation, much more energy in there, but still um, it's already rolling over and it's not even close to, to moving over to leading. So I'm going to keep that as an underperformer in the big scheme of things. There are some commodity subgroups that are worth looking at. 
And then uh, corporate bonds is the one, the only one that's really at an outperform. And the reason is right here because it's inside weakening, but starting to curl up. And if you look at that uh, price chart of LQD, then you see a very nice breakout first out of this flaggish formation and now to new highs. So I think that corporate bonds are ready to, uh, to curl back up and go higher. Now, why the neutral position for both government bonds and stocks? Very simple, because I do think that the balanced index fund, VBINX itself, uh, is doing pretty well. It's going higher, um, but it's very hard to make a call on either or. If you look at this weekly, then you're almost going to, to be inclined to say, okay, I, I want to be with stocks over bonds, but stocks are already rolling over here, um, which makes it difficult. If you go to the daily, you see the same opposite rotation where stocks are doing better and government bonds are, are, are doing less well. So I'm, I'm still struggling to make a very, to find a very clear signal because here on the weekly they're rolling over, governments are picking up, on the daily it's vice versa. So I'm going to be neutral um, to, to stay in line with the VBI and X benchmark and, uh, and add a kicker in the corporate bond department. If we then quickly move to the next level um, where we have the yield curve um, in US inside international markets and some commodity uh, sub indexes. Um, the yield curve remains the same. I prefer the longer end part. And in the um, commodity space, energy is doing really well. And I think there are some opportunities uh, for industrial and precious metals. Quickly bring up that RRG for commodities that's based on the GSCI groups. Then you see energy here, uh, losing a little bit of momentum, but inside leading. And we see uh, precious metals and industrial metals. Um, the industrial metals, a little bit ahead of precious metals. But if you look at, for example, the gold chart, it's looking really, really strong. And here it's the copper chart that is doing really, really strong. So uh, I moved them from underperformed to neutral because I do think that there are some opportunities in that commodity space. As a whole group, I, I am still not convinced uh, of it, but there are some pockets that are worth um, uh, looking at. Now, if we go at the individual sectors, then we got a speed this up a little bit um, on the right hand side and, and XLV is now this is the opening on Monday but on Friday we were here and this is the opening on Monday so I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll it back one notch because that is only one day and we don't know how that will close um, we have tech discretionary and communication services rolling over that could show some short-term weakness but in the longer term these are the stronger sectors, uh, including healthcare. So I'm going to keep them green in my overview, despite the fact that I, I do think that there is a, a small rotation going on, um, especially out of communication services, discretionary and tech. But the longer term trends, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, are really, really strong for those sectors. So where maybe we where may we see some improvement in the near term um, definitely the material sector that is really getting a lot stronger and um, industrials and financials could show some sort of surprises left and right and we'll we'll uh, later on we'll be talking about the um, the long short baskets that we're maintaining here in sector spotlight and um, uh, we're going to do some individual stock picks and look at those sectors in both a long and short perspective. So to wrap things up here, um, on the asset classes, stocks and bonds both continue to do well. Not a real preference right now from a longer term perspective. Be careful with the US dollar. It, it is breaking down. Um, corporate bonds seem to be doing really well in this asset class spectrum. On the yield curve, 
I prefer the longer dated bonds. Commodities as a group, not great, but industrials and precious metals could be cool and energy is definitely worth looking at. And then on the sectors we just discussed that the longer term trends are still intact. Stay with me, we're going to a short break and we'll be back after that with the long and short basket reviews. We checked our long short baskets or basket I should say um, that we've been building up here in sector spotlight over well it's actually a couple of months already um, so I want to take some time to uh, to review what we had and have in those baskets and, um, and make some changes actually so let's start with showing you what we have on both the long and the short side. Um, this is the RRG that holds the positions as they were and are until today. So we have on the long side, we have the S&P 500, obviously that's the benchmark of this RRG. We have XLC, which is communication services, on the long side as well it's been rolling over I've been talking about that recently in various shows we've got xlv which has just crossed into the lagging quadrant but um as we saw in the overview it's actually breaking out to new highs and we have fcx freeport mcmoran and that is powering into the leading quadrant doing very very well and we had NEM, Newmont Corporation, which did very well, but is now rotating into the weakening quadrant further down. That's it so far. And then on the short side, we had IEV, the Europe ETF, which is rotating inside, improving towards leading. We got the financials ETF, XLF, also inside improving, moving towards leading. And we have the Hong Kong ETF. Uh, where is it? EWH. Inside lagging, picking up a little bit of momentum, but with a very short tail. And we have Costco, COST, rotated into lagging, is now picking up a little bit of momentum. And we have NI, nice source, knee source, uh, inside lagging, but picking up momentum as well. If we look at that RRG on a daily basis, we see a little bit more granularity, but in general, it's sort of matching what we are seeing there. Um, let me quickly browse through them. So here's Costco rolling over, Hong Kong inside lagging, confirming what we see. FCX still far on the right hand side, that's good. IEV right in spot of the chart, in the middle of the chart together with SPY. Uh, NEM rolling over, losing momentum, nice source, insight improving, SPY of course, communication services just like it is on the weekly, uh, insight leading but rolling over but with a very short tail, financials picking up relative momentum and healthcare on the daily actually inside the leading quadrant so that's a little bit contradicting what we saw on the lagging, uh, on the weekly chart where it is in lagging. Um, I've already given away what I want to do here with the, uh, with the check marks and the X's, but let's uh, move through these individual charts to, um, to talk why I would like to do, uh, why, why I would like to add or take away those names. So if we start on the long side, um, well, obviously that, I don't even have to show this the chart of SPY. Um, uh, I, I'm taking it away from the long side basically because it was a, a pair trade with IEV when we were still looking on the one-on-ones um, 
and I actually want to put IEV on the long side. So I'm going to take SPY out of this out of this basket, uh, and I I don't really want to short SPY because initially I thought, oh, I'm going to swap IEV versus SPY because now I think that Europe is is um, on the verge of at least a few weeks of outperformance versus the US, um, but Honestly, uh, shorting SPY right now at this point in time is probably something like jumping in front of a freight train and that's not very good for your health um, or so I've been told. Uh, so I, I just take SPY out of the equation because it, it'll probably be um, the, the yardstick, the benchmark for most of our other positions. Um, but I'm going to uh, put IEV on the long side and the reason being that it is actually um, starting to pick up some relative strength. You see the, this is a daily RRG by the way, you see it picking up here around the 100 level. We'll, we, we still need to break above this resistance in relative strength, but I, I think that this pattern here of higher lows is sort of, you know, showing us a positive undertone. There are, there are buyers there who are, who are uh, willing to come back to the market at higher prices. And, and we all know that Europe is not as far as the US uh, already is at this point in time. So I'm going to give Europe the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to add it to the, to the long side of the portfolio, as you can see on this line here. Um, XLC. I'm actually going to take out because uh, it, it did pretty well for us since May and you see that it, it is now rolling over uh, and having trouble maintaining that positive momentum. We see that on the daily RRG and we see it on the weekly RRG. Um, that, that does not at all make communication services a bad sector or a weak sector. As a matter of fact, it's one of the stronger sectors. But for this portfolio, which is, I think, a little bit more medium to shorter-ish term orientated, it's time to, uh, to lock in some of the gains that we had since May uh, and take it off the table. Different story for XLV. Um, this is actually breaking to new highs. Uh, we had a patch of weakness here and it's, it's um, on the weekly RRG, it's pushing into the lagging quadrant. Uh, it, that is because of this, this couple of weeks of weakness that we saw that has been too much to keep it on the positive side of the weekly. But I'm very pleased with the break to new highs here and this attempt to turn around relative strength on the daily basis. So uh, I'm going to keep XLV in the long basket because I do think that there is uh, some upside potential left for this sector uh, in coming weeks. FCX, actually one of the star performers since uh, June, almost well, over 30%. Um, it's, it's running into a little bit of resistance, but that trend is super strong. And it is a, um, a materials stock and the materials sector is actually doing very well. Um, so I'm going to keep uh, FCX on the list for now. And then we have NEM. Oh, that's not NEM, that's NEM. NEM, here we go. Um, Newmont Corporation did pretty good, but it's now leveling off and you see that the RS momentum has already rolled over. Uh, our relative strength still okay, not a particularly strong RS chart and not breaking out above its previous high at the moment. So um, enough reasons to, uh, to get it out of the long basket uh, for now. So what are we going to add? We already talked about IEV. That's, that's a new addition to the long basket. XLB is actually a very strong chart. We're going to swap this now for the sector ETF because we're going to look at new stuff. So here is XLB moving into the, to the leading quadrant from improving at a, at a very stable RS ratio uh, level. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, well, our ratio is gaining at a stable momentum, so it's so it's a, it's a gradually rising trend. And if we swap this into daily, then you'll see the actual improvement because we see that um, 
XLB material is actually rotating strongly into the leading quadrant. So that's a good reason to pick that up and make that one of the positions inside the long basket. And then I'm going to add one single stock and that's going to be SEE, Sealed Air Corp. And if we put the full quote on, then you'll see that it is a material stock. So I'm in line with the theme of materials uh, improving. Um, it is just crossing over into the leading quadrant here. This is the weekly RRG. And you see a break above its previous high also on the weekly. You see the turnaround on the RRG lines. And if we do that on a daily uh, basis, then you see that breakout in a little bit more detail and very nicely rising RS ratio line backed up by positive uh, RS momentum and a break above resistance in the relative strength line. So that's a good reason to add uh, SEE as a stock pick in the material sector to our long basket. Now working our way through the uh, short side, like we have XLF obviously uh, uh, as a short position. I'm actually going to take that away um, because I do think that financials have improved recently. You see the pickup in RS momentum and the turn in RS ratio. Uh, this is on the daily RRG. Uh, so the, the big downside, the big momentum down is not there anymore. Um, it's still a, um, there's a fly here. Uh, it's still, it's still a, a pretty dangerous sector. It's to the left. It's not the strongest of, uh, of things, but, um, but not enough to, uh, to keep a full on short position in, in XLF uh, really. Hong Kong, a, a weak EWH, a weak ETF on the international um, sector RRG, and we see why, because now RRG lines are both heading lower again. We broke, we, we peaked here in the RS, uh, in the ratio line, in the, the ratio between Hong Kong and SPY. And as a matter of fact, I don't really like this chart too well either. We saw this break above resistance with a little island reversal and now we're we're breaking back below that that resistance that should have acted as support did that only for three days and now we're lower so um, this is not a very strong market uh, definitely not compared to the us so we're going to maintain this as a short position and then we have cost cost um, it is breaking out. This is not a bad chart. And you see that the um, RS ratio has improved since that we uh, went in that trade. It actually went up 9.8%. Uh, um, so for a short position, that's not very good. But we were looking at it against SPY. And then so you can see that cost um, underperformed SPY by 8%. So it sort of fulfilled our criteria in this long short basket. Um, and you can definitely also see that in the um, in the average returns uh, for those both baskets where uh, where the long basket um, did, did a lot better than um, uh, than the short basket. So the last one here, NI, NI. Um, we're gonna leave that as it is. Uh, not a very strong chart. It's, it's again starting to lose relative strength uh, and it's not able to push above its resistance level. It's got a lot of lower highs in place. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to assume that this is going to roll over and relative strength will weaken again. Uh, and this is actually uh, uh, already a, uh, it's a utilities stock and the utility sector is not very strong uh, either. Now for the new additions, uh, we got XLE and XLE, uh, you may remember that we've been calling XLE as a very weak sector for a very long time. Um, it, it made a massive rally uh, on the RRG, moved from weakening, uh, sorry, made, moved from lagging into improving um, with a very strong absolute return um, uh, profile. 
but it now starts to roll over far away to the left and heading down to the leg and quadrant again, which is, I think, a very weak sign for the energy sector as a whole. So I'm going to add XLE um, as a short position in this, in this basket. Um, well, assuming that it'll underperform the S&P 500 going forward. Individual stocks that I want to be very careful with. We, we, you know, you've seen that um, the technology sector is rolling over, showing some weakness, uh, both on the weekly, but definitely on the daily RRG. I just like I don't want to um, short spy as it's jumping in front of a freight train. I've got the same idea with technology because, you know, in the end of the day, it's a super strong sector. Uh, and, and the fact that it's now rolling over, I, I truly believe that it is a temporary thing. But nevertheless, uh, it'll probably give us a couple of good, you know, potential, potential trades, possibilities um, inside the sector. And one of those stocks that I really think is, um, is starting to lag is PayPal. If we, um, if we bring up, let me do that right here, the RRG for technology stocks, then PayPal is here inside leading, rolling over. This is on the weekly. And if we do that on the daily, then you will find PayPal here. If you can identify it inside weakening and heading towards the lagging quadrant right here. And if we put that on a price chart, it's still looking pretty good from a from a price perspective. But this low here actually would have been much better if it was above this previous low. Um, and we see the RS ratio. This is again SPY rolling over, um, which makes it uh, at least doubtful whether PayPal can hold this up. So in combination with the weakening of the technology sector, I, I, I am going to, uh, to pitch PayPal as a potential short for the next couple of weeks um, against SPY. And then the, the last one that I want to add to my short basket is ALL, that is Allstate Corporation. And I'm going to put that and that's a financial stock. So and we're going to put that here on XLF. And here it is just crossing over from weakening into the lagging quadrant. And if we do that on the daily, and we can, then we see that it's all side, already deep inside the lagging quadrant and moving to the left. So with this price chart, on the daily and it's now pushing against resistance doesn't seem able to push higher so we got this series of lower highs in place and relative strength rolling over with RS ratio deep down uh, a little hiccup in momentum here this is versus the S&P uh, I don't think that that'll make it back up to uh, to 100 uh, because there is a lot of overhead resistance in that relative strength line here so uh, that's why I want to put ALL to my basket of um, short positions. Now that wraps it up. We got a fresh basket here with five longs and five shorts. And as usual, we're going to keep an eye on it uh, going forward. And that wraps it up for today. This was Sector Spotlight. Thank you for watching. You know what to do with your thumbs, likes, tweets, retweets, comments, and what have you. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern with replays on the Stock Charts YouTube channel. For now, stay safe and I hope to see you again next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.